these ribbon cables are really terrible and if you take a look at that there isn't much space for it they just have it completely bent like 90 degrees which is not really great and this is where my, the source of all of my issues came hey what is up guys and welcome back so today we're going to be tearing down the iomi v1s as well as the sky zone sky o2 these are the latest for 300 bucks we also just got the new fat shark released but some might say that the sky zones picture quality is still better still unknown until i get my hands on one i highly doubt i will but i hope i do let's do a quick tear down see what's different in the iomi v1s from the v1 as well as check out the sky zone and what to look for if something ever happened but before we begin a word from our sponsor PCBWay is one of the largest PCB manufacturers and is a really great place to have your PCB manufacturer. Whether you're a hobbyist or a company, it is a great place to go. They have fast service, great quality, great customer support, and a file pre-check service where they have a human actually check your file before proceeding with the printing service in order to reduce any chances of error. Not only that, they have assembly services and they have much, much more. So go ahead and check the links down below to PCBWay.com. All right, so what we're gonna do first, we're gonna start with the IOM ways because I have the most experience with them. I've modded them, so I know their internals decent and I know if something has changed. Now, before you remove or take apart the Iomi V1S, there's a couple things to take note of. One is the faceplate. Do not remove it until you remove the screw that is right in by the nose area, which is this one right here. So make sure you remove this screw before removing anything. There might be a sticker covering it, so keep that in mind. So that's the first step you want to do. Then you just have two screws right here. And the next step is pulling it apart, but be very careful. And why am I saying that? Because it's using these really crappy ribbon cables. Look, it doesn't open all the way. So if I have to keep it like at a 90 degree angle here. So do not remove these unless you want to sit here for 30 minutes and try to put them back into place or remove that whole board out in order for you to put them back in. Now, I'm pretty experienced in doing this, but I even have to remove that board in the back with a couple screws, as you can tell, to put those back into place. There's nothing different that's noticeable. I mean, they say they might have replaced or changed out the RX module. That is probably true. It's difficult to see because obviously they're shielded and it's still in the same arrangement, same alignment here. They're using the same power board here. They have that same capacitor, the switching regulators here. However, what they've done this time, I think they've gone a bit cheaper because these were tantalum capacitors over here back then. I remember that. I remember that pretty good because that's where I had to take power from. Uh, so that has some of the, you know, the surface mount components have changed slightly. I don't have a clear image of how that one is anymore, but I know that for sure there was tantalum capacitors here. Uh, I think one of the biggest issue that can happen with this is this ribbon cable and they haven't done anything else, done anything to address it. Maybe not a lot of people had that issue, but maybe a year, two, three, four years down the line of usage, you might run into that. These ribbon cables are really terrible. And if you take a look at that, there isn't much space for it. They just have it completely bent like 90 degrees, which is not really great. And this is where my, the source of all of my issues came through this one here. And what this ribbon cable does, it does a lot of things. It brings in the video feed from the two uh, modules to the LC, from the LCD driver. So these, can be, so these could run. It also brings in power to the screens here. Um, it does a lot, a lot, a lot, this little cable with this circuit board here. Now, something to take note of here is that if for some reason something happened, the first thing to test is this ribbon cable. Remove it from both sides, and the way to test it is get your multimeter continuity mode, and then just lay, lay it flat, and then just go pin by pin, see if it beeps. If it doesn't beep, then one of the uh, traces is broken because it's like a bunch of wires in one wire. That's what the ribbon is. Uh, so this is where I would start off with here. Uh, for some reason, for example, there is no power. This is where also I would start off, but then I would move myself to this ribbon cable. And if it's not the ribbon cables, then it could be some surface mount component. Look for visual effects, uh, but I don't think you'll run into that issue. I, I really doubt it here. Uh, but yeah, these are the two main things. Actually, all the ribbon cables, just keep an eye on them. And I really don't like the amount of uh, 
stress that is being placed on this. Look at it. It's right above that. I wish they would have placed this board in a little bit deeper. Look at that. That's, that's, that's really difficult to show you. But do you see how they've bent it? It just comes out and it bends 180 degrees. These are really crappy. So, yeah, just keep an eye out for that. Not a lot of people had issues so far, I guess. I don't know. Actually, I didn't hear. Only me, basically. I'm the only one that knows about this issue. Um, oh, no, I think, what's his name? Had one, too. Oh, I forgot that guy's name. Australian guy. Uh, damn it. I'll probably remember by the end of the video. I'll put his channel name up here. Not Stu, somebody else. So just be really careful with taking these guys apart. So, yeah, and then just plug that in. And I'm just afraid that that just pinched it, pinched that little... Uh, ribbon cable there. However, if you do contact Iomway, I know for sure that they will actually send you those. I don't know how much they cost, but, the, but they will send you those if you order some. So uh, those are the things to take note of on the Iomways. Let's go ahead and jump to the sky zones here. And the way to take this apart is there is no screw for the faceplate. So just remove off the faceplate and then you get three screws. One, two, and then three right there. That one. Make sure you don't go on the AV in or AV out. It's right there. It's like right by the AV out, at the end of the AV out. So yeah, you just got those screws, and then just lift it up slowly, and it'll come right off. Oh, you'll also have the um, fan connected. Now immediately, it's really a pleasant to take apart. That's one thing that I really like about this. Now if we take a closer look at the way that everything is connected, it also looks like it's really well thought through, and you're using quality components. I don't know the name of this connector, which, but I really do love this connector. This is the one that's found in, in smartphone screens. Uh, so you just pop that up and then you're good to go. So that right right there is, is a proper connection. Here we also have this connector. This connector is what's bringing in the voltage and it's coming from the power circuit to power everything up because the power circuit is back here with the switching regulator and the inductor as you can tell. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom board right now here. Now up top there isn't really much to show. I think these are the LCD drivers. Let's see. Maybe we could find the gyro as well that's in charge of the head tracking. If they're using like an MPU 6000 gyro or 650, they will be able to find it. But I know for sure these are the LCD drivers. This is a really nice fat six megahertz. Is it megahertz? Yeah, six megahertz crystal here. Really big actually, that's pretty crazy. I think it has to do something with the camera here. Uh, but I could be wrong also. So as you can tell, yeah, the camera is right here. I, they've done something what as well as Iomway has done. As you can tell, there's a lot of tension on this camera wire. It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but they, these look like better, um, they look like flex PCBs instead of ribbon cables. Um, so that could be slightly better here. And if your camera ever stops working, just, just don't be scared. I don't even know if anybody's going to use it. I just keep forgetting that I have it. Someone actually mentioned something pretty interesting. They said, uh, if there was a way to switch or, you know, switch to the camera through our RC controller, that would be great. And... I think there should be a way, and if there isn't, I can bug Skyzone to give me a way, or tell me how the board's running here. So if we flip this over, I don't want to start taking apart the screens here. We see we have the RF, uh, the yeah, the RF modules or the 5.8 gigahertz modules into place here, and there's something interesting about these actually. I've never seen this done before. I don't know what these are, but I think these are Pico fuses. Um, I think they're SMD fuses and the reason why I say that is because I was actually looking into fuses uh, because I was designing another open hardware flight controller that does have fuses that can help you debug but they were really expensive or maybe I'm looking in the wrong place one of these was like I mean if you're not buying a lot I think it was like 10 bucks or 5 bucks for one of these here so I don't know if they are Pico fuses I'm actually going to just zoom in a little bit closer for anybody who knows what they are Please let me know down in the comment section, but it does really look like those uh, Pico fuses. So that right there. Uh, if I remember, I'll probably take a really close up picture, but it's going on the uh, middle, you know, the signal line that's coming in. And um, I'd, I'd find that pretty interesting. I've never seen that before. So yeah, it's on both of them too, as you can tell. You can see it if you follow the trace there. Here's our power circuit. We have a really nice fat tantalum capacitor. This is a switching regulator. So if anything bad were to happen with the power, this is where I'd want to start testing first. Um, just look up one of the chips here and then see how it works and just monitor its output. Or here we have the control or this is the peripheral. And that's actually, oh wow, we could take this out really nicely. Look at this. This is really nice. 
So I think this is the reason. Okay, this is just a theory of mine, but I think this is the reason why the DVR is so shitty, because they try to cramp a bunch of shit on one board. Uh, Sky Zone, you know, this the only downfall to this goggle is the DVR. Here we have a memory. Do we? Yeah, we have memory here. What else do we have? Probably, probably the gyro is probably going to be here also. No, but it's not out being outputted from here. Hmm. Sorry, I'm looking at it by myself. Oh man, I really love these. I want to try to implement these. Where are they? Hold on, I'm just going to get the, these right here. I mean, they look like nothing basically, but I, what they are is it's kind of like a, a, a four way resistor. It's just like one thing that has four resistors in it with the same values usually. And it's really nice, especially for our quadcopters, because usually you'd need a resistor on the, like the input and output when we're, we're using the STM32 flight controllers. And I, I really like those. I want to see where I can get them from. Hopefully they're not expensive, but they look really nice. It's just, I've always, I just want to try one in a build. I think it'd be pretty interesting. There's no need for it. So I don't know what chip does what here. I haven't searched any of these and hopefully we never need to ever search any, what any of these do. Cause if we do, then something probably happened. And I don't see the gyro unless you're using a gyro that I don't know its name here. Um, but yeah, overall, it's really nice. If you have an issue with this part here, just remove it. That's, that's what's so cool about this. I think Skyzone's employees were pretty happy with the assembling process. It, it doesn't look that complicated at all or annoying because, you know, you're just using these little connectors here and they're easily connectable. So you could easily quickly connect them. And I, and I do like that. Uh, it just makes your life a lot easier. So personally, I didn't want to take this apart because I really like it. Not that I'm not, I'm just not confident in myself. I've taken plenty of things apart and modded and everything. Um, I just, I just don't know why I just didn't want to take it apart. Um, maybe because I love, when I really, really like something the way it is, I don't like touching it. And, um, that doesn't go for everything, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, just didn't want to touch it because it's it's really nice. I'm actually using it really often now. By the way, I think I might have a little. So and again, guys, I'm telling you the, the, the picture quality on this and the overall quality and build quality is really good, really good. And I'm putting my neck down every time I say that it's because I really do have a lot of trust in it. And I, I like this product. By the way, I'm going to test Fat Shark, Sky Zone and Ion Way. I want to make a new email account. Now with, with fat shark, I do have an issue. So th that's going to be my test as my real issue. But with I way, I've only heard things about I way and sky zone. So I'm actually going to email them. Hopefully they don't see this. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I'm going to email them through a, another, I'm just going to make a random email address. I'm going to email them and sit, uh, talk about an issue and see how they help me. Uh, I'll probably, I'm also going to be doing a lot of update videos on all this stuff. So. All right, guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed the teardown. If you guys want to see more videos like this or do you guys have any ideas or suggestions, feel free to let me know. Everything is linked down below. Check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And also, do you have a Patreon? If you could support me there, that'd be awesome. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.